And, you know, I'm going to give you guys a lot of goodies, you know, some purchase agreements. And during these, we're, we're having a four part series every Thursday, every, the first Thursday of every month for the next four months. So this is part one. Today, we're going to be talking about wholesaling and finding leads. OK, that will be the first um, session today. And um, that's kind of pretty important, right? Finding leads. And then um, I'm, I'm controlling everything. All right, here we go. All right. Okay, so just to tell you guys a little bit about, about me, my name is, of course, Todd Chun. My company is TC Deals. Um, I have a bunch of different companies. I own a dumpster company. I am a licensed real estate agent um, since 2012. I just got a listing actually two days ago. So I do a little bit of that. Um, I have a son, he's 22 years old. He is also a licensed agent. So when I get those type of deals, I work with my son. He does all the paperwork, all of that kind of stuff. I don't even wanna be bothered with it. And I'll be the one to go and meet the, the client and get it locked up and get it listed. He'll do all the paperwork. So, and, and then he tells me what to do. So from there, he'll order the pictures, he'll do everything. So that works out well for me because I'm not, I'm, you know, I really don't have the time to do all that other stuff and I'm not good at paperwork. So I just know how to sign purchase agreements and assignment agreements. That's it. He fills them out and I sign them. But I also own a dumpster company. Um, I, I own about almost three years now, rubber wheel dumpsters. I have like 15 of them, two trucks. And that is a great, you know, I try to do things to help my wholesaling business and my real estate business. You wouldn't believe how many flippers I meet because I deliver a dumpster to their house. And then guess what I do? I write down the address that I delivered it to. I find out exactly what they bought it for. And then I keep track of it. I put it in my CRM, which is, you know, customer relationship management. I think that's what it stands for. It pretty much just keeps you organized, okay? Um, some people use a Google Sheet, Excel. It's just as long as you use something, you know, um, you could use paper, pen, but, you, you know, you just got to get a system together so you don't forget things. That's, that's the key. And we'll talk about that more later. But again, so I get a flipper. He flips a house. And then I see what he paid, you know. And then he goes on my buyer's list. And I try to sell him more houses. So I meet so many good flippers by doing this. And sometimes homeowners, you know. So I don't drive the, the truck and the dumpsters. I have many a times. When COVID hit, I was driving because my driver wasn't working. He didn't want to work. And, and I was still wholesaling deals. I'd pull up to a house with a dumpster on the back. And, you know, it, it kind of worked to my advantage. It's, you know, I think I'm, you know, hardworking guy, which I am, but I just think it kind of helped me out. All right. But anyway, and, and then I have um, another company. So TC Deals, I'm, I'm, with a, I'm a realtor with Genstone Realty. And TC Deals, my wholesaling for... When I go to someone's house to get a deal, I, I usually use Jensen's Properties. Okay, that's another company of mine. Because I don't want them to know me as TC Deals. Like if I go in a house, I'm, I'll take off my hat. You know, I, or I'll put a different, you know, baseball hat on or something. And I'll put a shirt over. I don't really want them to see that I'm TC Deals. Okay, it just doesn't, I guess there's nothing wrong with it, but when, when a customer says TC sells houses or buys houses, it just might make them a little nervous. So no big deal there. Um, just went on the radio uh, two days ago. Um, I'll let you guys hear the ad if you want to. I thought it was pretty good. And it's on a country station here. I'm out of the Detroit market, um, Wayne County, Oakland County, uh, Macomb County, and Genesee County is uh, the markets that I actually physically go to. And then I want to branch out to different states, Dallas, Connecticut, Saginaw is here in Michigan, things like that. Um, but first and foremost, I'm going to share my screen and just show you this real fast, if you can see this. 
All right. All right, sure. So just, uh, can you see, everyone see that? Thumbs up. Can you see my screen? Yeah. Okay, thank you. All right, just, you know, disclaimer number one, real estate investing by its nature is risky. You could win, lose, or break even. We cannot guarantee a profit or loss. We do not provide legal, accounting, or contracting advice, okay? So everything we I say is a lie. If you want to try it out, <laughs> anything we say, and it works for you, terrific. All right, so just getting that out of the way. All right, so let me go back and stop share. Perfect. Nope, I got some. All right, there we go. All right, so all right, so first of all, so today, like I said, this is how to get started in wholesaling and finding leads, okay? And so there's a lot of different ways to find leads. So the first, here's the, well, first of all, what is wholesaling? I um, mean, there might be some people so brand new, they might not even know what wholesaling is. So wholesaling is when you um, talk to a seller that wants to sell and you get a property uh, under contract in a, you know, you get it at a deep discount, okay? Why do people want to sell houses at a deep discount? Pl there's there's pr plenty of reasons, okay? One, the house might need a lot of repairs, okay? Um, they might owe a lot in taxes. Um, and they might be losing it to foreclosure. Someone might have passed away. So there's a lot. They just don't want to list it. They don't want people to come through the house. Um, they, they just want to sell it fast, um, they, or they might get a divorce. It could be all different type of reasons why someone might want to sell. Okay. So when you get under contract, a purchase agreement, and I'll share my purchase agreement, make sure we, I'm going to save this chat and I'll send you everyone a purchase agreement that I use and I'll send it in a word format so you could change it. And remember in different states, you, you, you're going to want either an attorney to look at it, um, a title company to look at it. And another good thing is you could even call your title companies that are wholesale friendly and ask them for a purchase agreement that they, because really you want the title company to be good with the purchase agreement. Okay. And in the purchase agreement, it says that you can assign the purchase agreement. Okay. So assignment, what is that? There's another document called the assignment agreement that I'm going to find a buyer. So if I get a property under contract for $100,000, and let's say it's worth three fifty, dollars okay, it needs hundred grand with the work, they want to just get rid of it, and um, I can assign it to another buyer. Let's say I'm, I'm trying to um, wholesale the property for $125,000, okay? So I'm assigning them. For, uh, signing it for 125000 and they're going to uh, um, take over that purchase agreement. So I'll send you guys an assignment also. My assignment does not state how much I'm making, okay? So when I send an assignment to a buyer to sign, I also send my purchase agreement so they can review it, but I cross off the purchase price on my purchase agreement. They could see everything but the purchase price. Because in my mind, it's none of their business. In my assignment, it says that the 125 is the purchase price and my assignment fee. Okay, so I have that all in the assignment agreement. Okay, so, and I know someone said they're from Chicago here. And I know that's one of the states where um, you, I don't think you could wholesale. So you definitely want to check in. I think you got to actually buy the property and hotel it okay and so hoteling which if you know is when you actually buy the property you might just throw it on the mls or or clean it up um make it look you know maybe you get the debris out of there maybe you'll paint a wall or not and and you just then sell it to a buyer on your from your buyer's list or you throw it on the mls and usually you get way more money 
in that in that scenario. Okay, and why is that? Because a lot of people don't know wholesalers. A lot of investors they think the only way you can buy a property. And I used to be one of you know six years ago I had no idea who wholesalers were. Okay, never never knew, and I'll tell you that story in a minute. But and a lot of people are like that. So they just scan this MLS every single day looking for properties and they make lower offers and things like that. But if they see an investment property, we're gonna price it right. And um, so we could sell it for more money, okay? And um, okay, so just to give you a quick history about myself, I, I should have did this in the beginning. So um, January 1st, 2017, is the day I quit my job. I worked 23 years. Um, I was a vice president of a mortgage company. I was there 23 years, started there canvassing, knocking on doors, so then became a loan officer. And I started running the finance department and the mortgage department. And um, I was licensed in nine states. And we had like 25 employees. The market crashed and I fired pretty much 25 employees. And once I did that, um, my income got cut 50 grand a year. So I'm used to making a lot of money here. Income got cut 50 grand a year. I still made good income, but um, they took away my car, my gas, all of it. And so now I'm like, you know, I had to get another job pretty much. I was working on the weekends wherever I could make money. Okay, so went, I heard a seminar um one of those fortune builders seminar on the radio and it said learn how to flip houses um learn how to you know so i went to the weekend it cost me a couple hundred bucks went a friday saturday and sunday and heard about wholesaling and they told me what to do go to the meetups never even knew there was a meetup went to a meetup and got up there told people who i was and from my previous job, I knew Detroit really, really well because I used to refinance houses. I knew every street. We used to actually go to people's houses. And um, so I knew how to sell and I knew the areas really well, which was a huge advantage for me when I got into wholesaling. So went went to a meetup like in October 2016. I met someone there and he, I told him I was going to quit my job. He said, put your money where your mouth is. Write me a check for 2,500 bucks. If you don't quit it by January 1st, um, he's going to cash it. So, so that's what happened. January 1st, I, if I'm so glad I wrote that check because on January 1st, I thought of every excuse. Like not to, you know, I was going to lose the 2,500 bucks. Am I going to lie to the guy and say I quit my job and I did it? And I'm not, you know, I'm not going to do that. And um, and then I knew if my wife didn't even know I wrote the check. So I would have been in big trouble there. And I probably didn't have the twenty five hundred dollars in my bank account. So I quit my job. I just he was in my boss. Well, uh, this is being recorded. I don't really want to tell you too much. I just quit my job. All right. Celebrated and went crazy trying to wholesale. And I daisy chained my first deal. Um, found so I met a buyer at a networking event. Someone had a deal. I made twenty five hundred bucks. I was the happiest guy in the world. What is daisy chaining? Um, a daisy chaining is taking someone else's deal without their permission and trying to sell it. Okay, which no one likes that. And I, especially if you blast it out on your Facebook page at a higher price, you're going to get a a bad reputation by doing that. So my suggestion is if there's a deal another wholesaler has, the best thing to do is call the wholesaler and actually get their permission or discuss how you could help them with it, okay? Maybe you could help them sell it. You could tell them I got a couple of buyers. I'm not gonna blast it out to the whole world. Um, I'm just gonna send it. Is it okay if I send it to a couple of buyers? Most people, myself included, would say, that's fine. No problem. Add your fee on top. Okay. Now, if I have a deal that's out there for $30,000 and 
sometimes I might even just tell him splat since I blasted it out. He's going to look, someone's going to look bad if they send it to their buyers for 33 or $34,000. They're going to say, well, I might, they might be on my buyer's list. They might say, um, I have seen it already. So maybe I'll cut them in the deal a little bit. All right. That's a possibility. Um, so, but, but always ask for their permission and, and just don't take their deals. Okay. So that's, um, you know, just make sure, you, you know, you don't do that. So any, if anyone has any questions, just raise your hand and then I'll be notified, I believe. Okay. So we got, so on daisy chaining. So now let's talk. Um, uh, so today we're going to talk about um, finding leads. Okay. Is there anyone here? And there's all kinds of ways of finding leads that never heard of the term driving for dollars. Just wave your hand, do some. Oh, yeah, some people don't have the video camera. All right, so driving for dollars, I'll briefly explain it because it seems like everyone's heard of it. But so driving for dollars and you pick a neighborhood and you look for houses you're going to, you're driving the neighborhood and you look for houses that um, are, don't, that show no pride of ownership, okay? No pride, of, they might have a bad roof. Um, they don't cut the grass, um, the peeling paint, just, the, you could just tell it's different than the other houses, okay? That could be a renter living in the house, which is fine, okay? You could take that, address down um that's the least you want to do take it take the address down and let's say you drive a neighborhood and you get 30 to 50 of these type of properties okay and then you got all and then you got the addresses so now you got to find their names and phone numbers okay so that's that's one part you could even go to the door and knock on the door Okay, I've done that plenty of times. And that's usually the way I like to drive for dollars. I like to knock on the doors. You knock on the doors and you knock, knock, you know, sit there, la, 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 la. And they answer the door and you just say, oh, hi, ma'am, how you doing? Uh, my name's Todd, I'm a real estate investor. I'm actually looking to buy another property in this neighborhood. And I was just uh, um, reaching out or coming out here to see if you're interested in selling, okay? If they say no, 90% of them are going to say no, 95. So my next thing is I always say, not at any price. And I say, not at any price? And I smile, right? Not at any price. Because today's market, we could pay more for our deals than we could three, four years ago. Okay. You know, buyers are paying more. They're selling for more. All that, all that's going on. So if, and then that really, when you say not at any price, a lot of times I notice that then they say, well, then they might, then I start talking to you. Well, what kind of price uh, would you offer? You know, that you get that a lot. All right. If they do say no again, then I always say, well, do you know anybody in the neighborhood that might be looking to sell? Or if you know any vacant houses, or any, you know, and I try to talk to them about that. Sometimes they point the house down the street over there or this house, I wish you could get, those renters are bad. I love rental properties because now you get, you could call the landlords, right? And, um, but if they do say, you know, if they are talking to me and they want an offer, then I'm gonna try to get in the house right then and there. I said, well, if I may, it'll only take me like two or three minutes I could do a quick walkthrough and I could tell you what I could do for you. And of course, it's going to take longer than two or three minutes because I'm going to sit there and I'm going to talk to them and I'm going to try to build rapport and get them to like me, right? And, um, and so that is really the best, best way. And a lot of times you're not going to right then and there get a deal on the contract. You're just, that's just step one. And then then you you, you could always, depending on how they, you don't just want to throw out a number be, right away because all they're going to say, thank you for that and have a nice day. I always say, well, if I may, um, let me do a little bit of checking. Um, I really like what I see. 
And what, and I try to get a number from them. What kind of number do you think, what do you think this house is worth? All fixed up, HGTV, beautiful. What do you think this house is worth? And you, and you be quiet and see what they say. You know, you want to try to get a number out of them. Okay. And then, cause you can always find out, well, to bring it to HGTV type of house, we're going to need to do, you agree, we're going to need to put a kitchen in here or the roof, we're going to have to replace the roof or you, you know, but then you got to tell them some good things about, well, we won't have to do the electrical because that's pretty new and the furnace looks good, you know, so you always want to just not always tell them the bad things, tell them some good things about their house also. And um, then you talk to them, well, if, if we're able to figure something out for you um, and it made you happy, where, where are you moving to? You try to get an eye, you know, where they might move to and how, you know, and, you, and you're just gauging their interests, right? So that's the driving, you know, driving for dollars. That's, does everyone, does anyone have any questions on driving for dollars in neighborhoods? All right, so the last thing about, the most important thing is once you drive for dollars, either you knock on the door or, or you just get the addresses, then, um, then you gotta get their names and phone numbers. So you could check on the, I get their names. I'm a realtor, okay? That's why I think it's so great to having your real estate license, okay? You might come across people that wanna list with a, with a real estate agent, okay, number one. But being a realtor, you got access to the MLS um, where, you know, where you could find comps, you could check the public records and see all the information, who's the owner, when did they buy it, how much did they buy it for, how many square foot the house is, all kinds of information. That's how I get their names and numbers. There's other sites you could do it also. There's um, um, Ben Verified is a good site. It's very inexpensive. You could get not just their names and phone numbers and addresses, but you could get their relatives information also. And that costs about, I think I got it. I think I pay 25 bucks a month for Ben Verified. Okay. So pretty inexpensive. And they have some other ones like free people search, I think might be one. Um, Realty track, you could, um, I think they have a free version of that. You could type in the address and get their names. All right. So a lot of different ways you could do that. But Ben Verified, you get their names and phone numbers. Um, they have bat skip tracing, same type of thing. But, you know, when you're brand new, you probably don't want to get all the gadgets and start getting a expensive CRM and bat skip tracing and a dialer. You know, you just pick up your cell phone and start calling people and leaving names and, or leaving messages if you, if you um, get a voicemail. Um, if you're so brand new, like some people are so young too, they might be 18, 19. How are they going to realize, you know, this guy's not an investor. He's not buying my house. You can always say, you know, who you are. I'm working with um, an investor. Um, you can say his name. He's out of Michigan. His name's Todd. Todd, he's been doing this a long time. I, I don't, you could say that. I don't, that, that'll be fine with me. Okay. Um, and you, you present that you guys work, you, you work with them. Okay. And, um, and when you leave a message, I got two different messages that I leave somebody. Okay. I say, hi, ma'am. How you doing? Uh, my name's Todd. I was calling about your house on Burt Road. I don't like to leave that full address because it might not be them. Sometimes, you know, we're calling people. We're not sure if it's them or not. So my name is Todd. I'm going to, I'm, I'm, I'm calling regarding your property on Burt Road. I'm looking to buy another property here in the next um, two to three weeks. I was just reaching out to see if you're interested in selling. Uh, please give me a call, my number, and I repeat my number twice, okay? Um, another, another way, another message you can, if you got a really hot lead, you can't seem to reach anyone by calling. Um, you might say, hi, how you doing? My name's Todd. I... I know you have a property there on Burt Road. My number is 248-497-9195. I have a property in the area. I got some great news for you. Give me a, um, please call me because, and then I hang up. I just hang up. I just, 
in a, like I pretend that the 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 phone, you know, my message went too long or something. And I get a lot of people that call me back. All right. I just say, just give me a call because, and I click it. And you get people calling you. Sometimes they're mad. It doesn't matter. They're calling you. And you get you get them on the line. And then you talk to them. Oh, I'm so sorry. I, I, then I leave a message, you know. And they say, no. I say, oh, okay. Well, I was calling regarding your house. And then I go into it from there. All right. So, um, and then I always text people. You know, I might call them first. Um, and then I might text them. Right. And the next day, I might call again without leaving a message. The next day, I might call again and text again and leave a message. So I, I, I try to reach them. And, and then once you talk to somebody and they're not interested or they might be interested, I always say, is, when should I follow up? And if they say three months, then I follow up in one month. You know, you just kind of one and a half months. Just, they, just cut it in half. Um, but you want you really want to make sure you're doing follow-ups. That's the most important part of this job is follow-ups. That's where the money is, all right, is, is making sure you follow up. Because the first time, a lot of times they're not going to sell you, sell it to you unless they're, it's really distressed. If it's a landlord who they're, they're evicting a tenant or something, or, or they just have a bad tenant. I buy a lot of houses um, I get them under contract that they have bad tenants. They're not paying. I take them over as is. I get rid of the tenants or my buyers, but I get them a lot cheaper that way. You know, if a house would normally, I would buy for 30,000, I might get it for 15,000 because I'm, I'm inheriting a tenant and I can't get inside the house. Okay. And then I get permission from the, the seller. I say, is it okay if I knock on the door? They're always gonna say yes, all right? And then I'm, I'm, I'll bring back up with me. I'll go knock on the door and I'll be nice to them. I'll say, what's going on? You know, and they'll give me a story, whatever. And I get inside the house and take a look at it. And I try to, sometimes I pay them money to move. Sometimes I um, just sell it to a buyer and let them worry about it. So it depends on the deal. You know, if I, if I could sell it for, 20,000 and I got it for 10,000 and it's worth 80,000 fixed up. It's a nice area. I got people all day long. That's going to buy that. Okay. But so it just depends on the deal, how you got to structure that. Okay. So, but that's, um, so that's what driving down, driving for dollars is all about is getting names, um, getting numbers, addresses, and, and making the phone calls, texting, and um, either even knocking on the doors, okay? Um, and, and that really is the best way, in my opinion, of finding deals, okay? Because you could buy lists, everyone buys lists, everyone's calling those same people, okay? So there's companies like listsource.com, listability, they provide lists, um, you could get pre foreclosures. Um, here, I got a, I got a slide I want to show you guys because this might have a bunch. I don't want to forget any. Here it is. All right. All right, great. So where do you get your leads? Um, we'll go over some of these. Like I was saying, like a foreclosure list or pre foreclosure list is a, is a good, is a good list. You know, these are people that are behind on their payments and either you could knock on the door. I wouldn't, I would not knock on the door and say, oh, I see you're in foreclosure or you're about to go into foreclosure. I would treat it like any other call. You know, hi, my name's Todd. I'm an investor. I'm looking to buy, um, I'm looking to buy another house in the neighborhood. And I was just seeing if you're interested in selling, you know, you go always say I buy houses and all kinds of different houses. It could be someone, the house might need a lot of work. It might be a pretty house. It might be going into foreclosure or you just want to move, you know, so you could, you could talk like that and see what they say. And if they do mention that they're in foreclosure or they're behind, well, you could try to help them a few different ways. You could help them try to save the property. 
nine times out of 10, they don't have the means to do that. Um, you could, you know, buy it from them and then you could wholesale it. You could catch it up and buy it on like a subject to type of loan. There's just, there's other ways of doing that. We'll get into that later. All right. So probate list is really good. I ran a call today. That was a probate list in a area that the house is in Detroit worth over $300,000. And um, so trying to pick that one up for 130000 and it needs a lot of work, but it's going to be a killer deal. Auctions. I went to the auction today in Detroit every Thursday. There a lot of good things that happen at the auction. Um, it's a different type of um, deal, but you will also meet a lot of good buyers at the auction. Everyone that's there every week and they're buying deals, you should bring flyers, hand them the flyer with a deal on it. Um, make sure they have you could get try to get their name and number. I got all the people. I've been going to the auctions for years. I got them in my I text them all all the time, send them deals. So that's a way to build your buyers list there. Um, we already talked about driving for dollars. Um, networking is huge. OK, so I go to all the networking events all in town in, in the Detroit area. We probably have four maybe five every month, um, good networking events, maybe even more, um, but you can only go to so many, but you wanna go there, tell people who you are. If you could get up on stage and, and, and tell people who you are, be loud, be loud, be loud, yell, wholesale. I always go up there, wholesale, wholesale, wholesale. My name's Todd Chun, TC Deals, and I just scream. I want everyone's attention. And I try to get buyers and I, I try to sell the deals on there also. Um, let's see. So we got Craigslist. Um, um, Craigslist is another one that you could get um, deals off of. Um, I What I've done on Craigslist is I found, um, I always look for people that are trying to sell their house on Craigslist that seem to be a landlord, okay? And I might call them and um, I would, what I'll do is call them. I won't tell them I seen that their property was on Craigslist. I will just call them, say, how you doing? Um, you know, I tell them who I am. I said, my office gave me your information. And I think they said you had a property over there. Where is it? Uh, and then they tell me the address or they might say where it is. I play dumb. I and then I asked him, I said, okay, because on Craigslist, they'll say the price. It might say $50,000. And I said, oh, great. Is this a property you're living in? Um, is, it a, is it a property that's rented? Is it vacant? And then they tell me, and I take it from there. Okay. And um, if they tell me, you know, if they're living in it, I, and I, I said, okay, when are you looking to move? If it's vacant, I said, I always say, is the furnace still there? Uh, what 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 does the house need? Things like that. And if there's a renter in there, I say, is the renter making their payments? Do they want to stay? And I start talking to them. And then from and then if they want if they wanted fifty thousand on Craigslist, I get some more information about the house. And then I from there I would ask them. So what are you looking to get for the house? They might say forty thousand. They don't realize it's on Craigslist. They might say fifty too, right? So. But they say 40, now I know they're motivated. If they say 50, either way, I say, well, let me ask you this, if I may. Um, if I was able to give you a large down payment and make you monthly payments, you know, for, you know, a short amount of time, um, would that be something you might want to do? Would that be something that, you know, um, you'd be interested in? If they say yes, then I'm going to make that appointment to go look at that property. That means they, they're they pretty motivated. You might even be able to get that on terms um, or seller financing, things like that. So, um, so Craigslist is a good way. I used to call them in the very beginning. When I first started out, I would go on Facebook Marketplace. I'd go on Craigslist and for sale by owners. I would really, I got some really good deals on for sale by owners also. So um, so those are a couple ways of picking up leads and 
here was a one question here. Would you suggest having the buyers in line before driving for dollars? No, I do not. I suggest you get deals under contract. If it's a good deal, you'll find a buyer, okay? Um, buyers are really easy. There's, and we're gonna go over that in one of, in, in one of the um, series, how to find buyers. There's so many ways to finding buyers. And, I, and that's why I'm going into different states right now looking for wholesale deals. And I'm not even worried. I don't have any buyers in those states and I'm going to find buyers. I know it. So yeah, I would not suggest that. But there is, I'm not saying it's wrong. There is a lot of um, people that teach that, that you got to build your buyers list first. But I think you're, uh, in my, the way I do it, and I'm not saying they're right, I'm right. Um, I just think you should be out there looking for, looking for deals, um, looking for motivated sellers. You know, that is um, what I suggest for sure. So I want to show you my lead sheet and I could be more than happy to send this to you. Um, Todd, is it all right if people interrupt you while you're talking and ask questions? 100%. Yeah, because I, I could just talk forever. So please do that. All right, this is a, um, a simple lead sheet that I have, okay? So it, as you can see, it gives you the date, the time, the lead source is important, where you got the lead from, driving for dollars. Um, I just had a property manager or someone that's a marketer, and I do this with Mark also, but I had a marketer just, they were marketing mailing letters and they had like a hundred leads come through and they bought the ones they wanted they had like 80 leads left and they talked to them all and they don't know what to do with them so they just sent them all to me so that lead source would be whoever that person is so i'm calling those i'm going through those and um i get their name address phone number um i email if i can and i ask them these questions like you know, is this a brick house? Is it wood? Is it frame? Um, and how many bedrooms is the property? You know, bathrooms. And I circle it. I don't have to write it in that boom. Does it have a basement? Um, is there a garage? The roof can uh, tell me a little bit about the roof. And I go over all those questions. Okay. So here's the items that you try to get when you pre when you're pre qualifying um, a lead is like the condition of the property. That's what we were just talking about, right? And then the motivation to sell, uh, their timeline to sell, and their price. Those are, and, and to get those questions, of course, the condition, you know, that's the easiest part. The price is the hardest part. Um, and these are some of the questions that I've wrote down that I have right in front of me when I'm talking to them. I might not say all of them, but um, I always ask them, like, is there anything wrong with the property that I should know about? Okay. Um, that is, you know, that is very important because they might say, yeah, you know, there's a hole in the roof, you know. Um, um, and, the, and so these are some things if they and also if they ever tell me a price like, yeah, I was thinking about forty thousand dollars. Like if I'm face to face on the phone, my, I'm trying to get into the house. This wholesaling that I'm teaching is going, I'm not teaching virtual wholesaling. That's totally different, right? And, and I do that, but um, I'm teaching about how to make a lead and then how to get into a house and look at it and get it under contract, okay? So if I'm in front of a, uh, um, somebody and they tell me they want 40,000 for the house, I might look at them and I'll be like, um, I got to show you my, hang on, I'll go back to this in a minute. Let me stop and share. So you, I don't know if you can see me, so. We can see you. Oh, you can? Oh, yeah. awesome. I can't see you guys. All right, so I'm a, if someone says they want 40,000, then I'll say, I'll just put my hands together and I'll be like, you know, I, I, I was thinking about half that. And that, that I'd be quiet. Don't say another word. I was thinking about half that. And then from there, you the first one who talks after that's going to lose. 
So you don't want to say anything and they're either going to throw you out the door. A lot of times they do not. Um, they, they're either going to throw you out the door or they're going to come down lower. Okay. And they come down lower and they say, well, could you do 30? I say, well, let me, you know, 30, let's meet halfway. How about 33, five? That's not halfway, is it? <laughs> From 20 to 30, I say 33, five. Is it, if that, would that work for you? And boom, they say, they'll say, yeah, whatever. If they say no, then we're negotiating. Okay. So that is, that is the key. And I just started doing that. It's really successful. So I, I would do it a totally different way before. But when they say a number, you say, when you get the opportunity, you, you know, you don't want to be a jerk about it or you want to be kind of just, you know, I was thinking about half that and then just see what they say. All right. So to let me know how that works. I hope you guys <laughs> get that, you know. All right. So there's a lead sheet. I'll be more than happy. I mean, I got it in PDF. It's it actually when someone calls you back and you have it right in front of you, you can write it and keep track of it. Right. So and then there was another. Let me go back. I want to show you one more. I got a cold calling script. We could go over that too. Todd, um, pe people put in a question mark. Um, yeah. You'll send them the forms and that. So how do they go about making sure they get those forms by putting their email into the chat? Or? Yeah, put their email in the chat. And what I'm going to do, Mark, is save. Um, I'm going to save the, you know, the chat. If you go to the more, I know how to do that. You could save the chat and then I'll send everybody. Yeah, if you want it, put your email in there and play, please send me the docs. Uh, you know, if you don't want it, that's fine too, but I can, you know, send it to you. Are, are you okay if I spend a second just kind of setting up people on, on how to listen and what you're, you're saying? Yes. Yeah. There's people that are on the call that, you know, they, you, you're brand new, you don't have a buyer's list, you don't know how to comp the properties, you for sure are intimidated by going and talking to some stranger at his front door. And it could be that there's people on that that doesn't work for. So the, the thing that I've learned out of, out of doing this and working with Todd is you're, everybody's got different talents and that's the beauty of wholesaling. So if you're brand new at this and you're, you're questioning things, I think the first thing you need to do is take somebody like Todd and say, how can I work with you? How can I get in the game? And you need to find something that you can get successful at. So if it's in my, in my case, I'm a lead generator, but so it could be the fact that you're generating leads by doing bandit signs or however, but then you've got the lead. What do you do? Then you need somebody like Todd to team up with. And uh, I know that uh, Todd will talk about squatting up. That means being a partner with another wholesaler. And uh, that's actually how I make my total living is by teaming up with people. And I think that that's the best way to jump into this game. And I've been in the game a long time and I've done the stuff Todd's talking about. And, um, you know, so, so he's a great resource, but you need to stop him and say, now this is what I can do. How can I fit into this? <laughs> and yeah. get started. So. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Mark. Hmm. Yeah. Squatting up is, is I make, I, I could tell you guys last year, in, in June, June or July, um, I think it was June, was my best month ever. I, I closed 19 deals and I uh, squatted up with seven different wholesalers. One of the deals was mine and the other 18 were with different wholesalers. So some of them I did three, some of them I did four, some I did one, but we did 19 closings and the wholesalers combined made $123,000. That's how much they made. And, and I was really close to that too. So it was a killer month. And that's what we did. That's squatting up. So different levels of squatting up. You might squat up with someone because you have buyers or you help them sell the deal. Or you might just give someone a lead and squat up. 
or you might have a deal under contract or you need someone to go to you on the appointment so they can talk to the and get it under contract and help you with that. But, you know, so it's different levels of it. When I squat up with someone, um, you know, it, it, it just all depends. Um, you might split the deal 50, 50. It all depends on what type of where you're at with the deal, I guess you would say, but you work that out prior to, you know, prior to going there or squatting up with somebody. Okay, so, and then here's a few places um, to find, you know, sellers, okay? So leads pretty much. And um, we talked about a few of them, um, a yard and bandit sign. And um, if you don't know what that is, just please put it in the comment. I'm trying to think, I might have one here somewhere. I don't. But, you know, the signs you see on telephone poles, um, you know, that, that's a good place. I actually, I'm going to bring one next, next month. I'll have it with me. I have a sign that says, to give you, a, this is kind of funny. Um, and then, Mark, you might want to tell your story about your son and the bandit signs. But yeah, anyway. so if you, if you want to shoot this at me right now, I got a bandit sign hold up right now. Okay. So, so I don't know. You're sharing your screen now, so you'd have to take that off. Yeah, let me hang on. You know. So so guys, this is a. Can you see it? All right. No, you got to turn your video on. Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to swear. <laughs> there we go. Whoops, it's back oh, on. Stop. Hang on. There we go. Yeah. There you go. So, we, house yeah. So happening. cash for your house. Real simple sign. Yep. And awesome. Yeah, yep. I'll tell my son's story. So yep. I got really heavy duty into putting bandit signs up. We were running about 50 calls a day looking at properties. I was very aggressive. I put out over 2,000 signs uh, in just Detroit. And uh, my son, I, I paid him $2 a sign to stick up. But uh, what I failed to do was to realize that he didn't take the scrutiny that I took. So he took the bandit signs and if the house was boarded, he'd hammer a nail right through the sign, right through the two by four, right through the people's window. So he like left this sign right in front of the house. So it's like a business card saying I broke your window. So I bought some windows. He didn't care if the house was owned by the mayor. So he would put signs up in front of on telephone poles in the wrong neighborhoods. So you have to be, when you put out bandit signs, you have to be careful when after that, oh, and, and as a result of that, uh, I got a call from the police and they said, remove your signs. And uh, of course I had 2000, I had no idea where they were. So that uh, ended up in me being arraigned uh, 18 times in the 36th district court. So I don't recommend doing something like that. But after that, I still did signs and I ever, ever had a problem because I was careful where I put them up. So if I put signs up in an area where they didn't allow signs, then I would put them up like in service stations with the telephone pole facing the pumps or by liquor stores or by whatever. Yeah, I would figure out where I could put the sign up and not have a problem. And th they work really well. Um, and we still put signs out. I, I And we ha I have somebody that goes out on a Friday night, one of the people that's on the call today with you, he'll, he'll get paid to go out and put signs up. And out of that, he sometimes gets listings out of that or, or leads that he's running on. So, uh, but they'll put them up on a Friday in the medium and stuff and then remove them on a Sunday so that the city officials quit on Friday and then they're back on Monday. So yeah. they're able to effectively generate leads. So that's it on bandit signs. I'll shut up. Yeah. And so I have a bunch of, I got like a um, hundred bandit signs made and they say, what they say on it is foreclosure coming soon, call today and my phone number, okay? So if I go buy a house or let's say it's someone I can't find, I can't get a hold of them, I tried everything, I'll put the sign in front of their house. And then what usually happens is the neighbor will call the owner 
and, and say, what is your, or they'll drive by the house and see this sign and they're going to call, call me, right? And they're going to yell at me. They're going to scream at me. Why did you put this sign? My house isn't in foreclosure and this and that. And then I'll say, sir, hang on. Wait, who are you? And they'll tell me. I said, what are you talking? What's your address? Oh, okay. Hang on one second. Let me check the list. And I check my list. I say, oh my goodness, sir. I'm so sorry. My son must have put it at the wrong house. Sorry. Oh my gosh. I'll come and pick it up now. And, or you throw it away. And then now I'm apologizing. And then I said, I don't know why he did that. He knows the, usually the houses that we put those signs in front, they might be boarded up. They, you know, they, they, they might have had a fire. I'm sure your house isn't like that. But what we buy houses, you know, I'm an investor. I'm looking to buy another house. And um, are you looking to sell? And I just get right back into it and try to talk to them to get their house. Okay. So if you really can't find someone, you might want to, that's a, that's kind of a, a trick, I guess you could call it, you know, but they're going to yell at you. I can promise you that. All right. So let's go to the couple more and some lead other ways of, of leads. Okay. So my, one of my favorites is right here, a mailman or a male woman. Okay. Uh, I think you guys can see my screen, right? Yeah, I think, let me see. Oh, yes. Yeah. All right, perfect. So mailman, male woman, they, they go through every, they're the same route. They know every um, bad house. Um, if a tenant moved out, they know when they're behind on their mortgage because they're sending them, the, they're getting a certain mail. And, and if you create, if you create a special phone number for them, and there's a way to do that where when they send you something, you know, and you keep, you know, once you pay them one time and you keep paying them, you know, they're going to be your best source. And then they can recruit other male people for you in different neighborhoods. And you could kind of piggyback, say, look, if you recruit people, every time they bring a deal, I'm going to give you this and this, you know, so that they're really, really a good source. All right, so that's a good one. Of course, um, attorneys, um, if you can get with attorneys, they, they have a lot of houses that they, you know, families, you know, are getting a divorce and they might have some junk houses or they just need to sell the house they're in. And um, there's all different types of lawyers. So it could be like they said, probate lawyers, divorce lawyers. So those are, that's a good source. Um, network meetings is is great where you that that's where you where you get a lot of buyers okay um and you might be able to squat up with people um public adjusters um is a good one you know people that you know when a house um i think they're when a house catches on fire you know there's people out there that they 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 love firehouses all right we talked about the auctions foreclosures um, you know, you get different lists from the counties like demolition properties and um, at for sale by owners. We talked about that's great. And, um, you know, so these are some really good, you know, ways. And then you got to you got to um, kind of be creative. I always get yourself an elevator pitch. OK, and um, meaning. Every time I meet somebody, of course, like on my mask that I have, you know, I might have a mask on, especially when you had to wear masks, that would say um, TC sells cheap houses. And you would not believe how many, the people I talked to, you know, with that, you know, everyone called me or, or wanted, excuse me, wanted to talk to me. Hang on, I'm trying to stop sharing this. All right. So my mask would say TC sells cheap houses. Um, and, you know, it was a conversation starter. And anytime I see anyone, I tell everyone what I do. And um, it's so important. 
Okay. So let's um, open this up to some questions. Wait, wait, no. Come on, bring me some questions. Come on, Melvin, what do you got? Okay, I have, oh, go yeah. ahead, I'm sorry. No, you go ahead. Go. Okay, I have been bumbling around. So when I say bumbling around, maybe I'll get intimidated, intimidated because I haven't had a deal yet. So when I make my calls, cause I use the software. And so when I make my calls, I have my script and I kind of practice it, but of course it's like, oh, I'm not interested in there. Click the phone in my face or something like that. So mm -hmm. is there any other tip you can give me in terms of like nailing that script? I don't know. You've already given kind of examples. I'm in the Texas, in the DFW market. Yeah. Um, yeah. What, so what, I'm just kind of. What is, what is your script? So, okay, my name is Maisha Applewhite. I'm calling from Purpose Housing Resource Group. And um, I saw your your home on such and such street. And I I wanted to, to learn more about it. Are you interested in selling? And that's it. I just kind of go from there. For sure. Mm -hmm. No, it sounded pretty really good, actually. So let me tell you my script because I'm more of a, you, you're more of a, professional in my opinion when you're talking i'm more of a not professional <laughs> maybe okay. I in high school but so. okay that's what i said maybe i need to be like more common or something i don't know maybe, maybe maybe not but i'm just saying so when i say when i when i call i, I don't tell them my last name all right one reason is my last name not that well Chun, that might scare people off, right? I'm just going to put it at that. So I, might, I just say my name. I don't say my company name. I, I say, hi, my name's Todd. How you doing? Um, sometimes I don't even let them talk. Oh, hey, ma'am. My name's Todd. I'm calling regarding your property on Burt Road Street. I'm an investor. I was actually looking to buy another property here in the next, you know, two, three, four weeks, something like that. And I was just reaching out to see if you're interested in a fair cash offer. That, okay. Okay. And they say no. And I say, well, not at any price. And then see where they go from there. Well, if I may, let me ask you one. If they say no again, well, let me ask you uh, one more question. Um, do you have any land or do you know anyone that is looking to sell? You know, see what they say from there. Okay. So, that's perfect. No, that's good. That's yeah. good. I appreciate yeah, that. So you just got to make sure. And every a lot of things that I am telling you guys, I've learned it from podcasts, from other people. So, you know, so when if you're hearing it on, on the podcast, it's probably because that's where I got it from. So they always say, smile, stand up if you can. Mm -hmm. Stand up, smile, dial. Hey and make a pile of money, right? Smile, dial, make a pile. So that's how you do it. You gotta be, you gotta, you know, maybe stand up and say, hey, hi, how you doing? Oh, terrific. My name's Todd, who's this? Oh, okay, how you doing? My name's Todd, um, I'm an investor. I'm looking to buy another property here. I would love to buy one tomorrow, but you know, whatever works for you. I was just reaching out to see if you're interested in a cash offer. Uh, no, well, not at any price. You know, the market's hot. I'm sure you could get more money now. Maybe you want to take advantage of that because you never know how long it's going to last. No, I'm good. Okay, well, all right. Well, let me ask you um, one more question if I may. Do you have any friends, family, anyone you know that might be looking to sell? I don't, you know, no. Right. Okay, well, I appreciate it. It's okay if I, uh, you know, Maybe you're not looking to sell now. What about the next three months from now, six months? Um, are you looking to maybe sell then? Is it okay if I follow up with you? Uh, maybe if they say yeah, throw them on your follow up. But if they say no, I'm never moving out of this house. Okay, all right. Well, I appreciate you. Thank you so much for talking to me. Boom. Right. Right. And and that was the uh, that, that's the first part of my like intimidation. The second one is the deal, because I put in an offer on a place and I think I put in 
um, an offer that was too high. So when I tried to connect with my end buyers, uh, my calculation was off. So do you, what calculator do you use in order to come up with the deals? Um, I mean, with the numbers, the spread. Yeah, so great question. I don't use the calculator they teach you on these wholesaling classes. I know, I know. What's that? I said, I know, right? That's where I got some of them from. How do you know? Oh my yes. God. <laughs> yeah. So I, I kind of work the deal backwards. What, you know, I, it's pretty easy to figure out what the ARV is in most places. You know, if you got access to the MLS, you could figure out all fixed up, beautiful. What are these houses selling for? Right. There's two type of deals. There's one that's a flip and one that's going to be a rental two different ways you're trying to get that deal on the contract. So the flip all fixed up, what is this house worth? And then you work it backwards, meaning how much does the house need in repairs? And you wanna over-exaggerate that, not too crazy, but kind of over-exaggerate it, you know, and um, you know, you really don't wanna tell the people you sell the houses, what you think it's in re repairs, and you can always talk to the seller. You say, okay, you know, when you're there, I, I just did that today. I said, well, there's 23 windows. And, and then I figured 500 a window because this is a historical house. And I said, the roof, oh my gosh, you got three layers up there. We got to resheet it. What do you think the, how, that roof's going to cost? And they said, probably about 20,000. I said, oh, I hope I can get a better price than that, but you're probably right. <laughs> And I give them to give me these numbers, right? How much do you think if we ever make this kitchen real, real nice and granite and maybe blow this wall out and do this, how much do you think that would cost? And they give me a number. I said, yeah, you're right. <laughs> Man, you've done this before. And then I'm talking about the paint. You know, it's 2,000 square feet. It's probably going to be three, four bucks a square foot. And I'll get a price out for that. And I'm going through every little repair and I add it up. And, you know, boom, boom, boom. Oh my gosh, it's $75,000 to fix up this house. Jeez. And then if you get them, if you get a seller to tell you what they think their house is worth all fixed up, you might come at a number, this house, you might have checked it on MLS. It might be worth 300,000, you know it, but they might give you a number at 240. If that's the number, you just made, you got 60 grand to play with right there. And, and, and then you got the, you should, you, then you're doing everything off of 240 to start instead of your 300. I hope that made sense. If not, it's really important. So tell me or speak up if you need me to repeat that again or explain it better. So if we're at two. Oh, no, you helped. Thank you so much. That was helpful. Yeah. So, and then you got to leave 20 to 25% uh in it for the the flipper okay it used to be a lot more but not in today's days i always try to leave them 20 25 percent what does that mean what they buy it for with your fee in there and what they what the repairs they got to put into it let's say it's two hundred thousand. well the worst the house is you might want to go 25 percent if it's a pretty easy rehab, you go 20%. So if they're going to be all in it at 100, then you want they're going to make an easy rehab. They're going to make 20 grand. Uh, medium rehab, 25. A horrible rehab, 30 grand, you know, sometimes more. Because the horrible ones you could get cheaper usually. Hopefully that made sense. Okay. So I kind of do it that way. Um, and regarding rentals, I do have a a formula that I'm gonna send you guys the Excel um, or the Google sheet that you punch in the price that you're gonna sell it for. You punch in the, the repairs and the price you're gonna sell it for is gonna have your fee in there. Repairs, and then you're gonna put in the rent amount that it should rent at or what it's rented at, the taxes, the insurance, 10% for management and 10% for hold back and repairs. And it'll give you an ROI. In Detroit, I used to sell my deals between 18% and higher ROI. Now I could sell them between 15 and higher. Okay, that's in Detroit. And it's 
usually I'm selling them around 20% because the rents are so high right now. All right. So that's a formula you could figure out when you sell the deal. And so, you know, you're going to have to get it for less, you know, because, um, and I'll, I'll, I'll share that. Maybe I'll go over that in one of the series. Also, it's a pretty good tool there. Awesome. Thank you. Appreciate it. And uh, so give me some more questions. Come on. Hey, Todd, Eddie, how you doing? Good, Eddie. Hey, quick question for you on the uh, banded signs. I know you mentioned your unique signs about foreclosure coming soon, but on the traditional banded sign where folks are out there, you know, putting them on telephone poles and stop signs and that type of thing. Do you still think that's a viable marketing strategy given that uh, it's such a cutthroat wholesale market where you put your sign up one day and go by the next and your sign is gone. Somebody else's sign is up there. Yeah. Um, I know people that do it. Um, I would, I like going by abandoned houses and putting them on the abandoned house. <laughs> so I, I've done that or put them in just different weird spots, you know, um, I like that better than just to throw out signs. I like using the same color that everyone uses because it looks like I'm bigger, you know, like if yellow and black, it looks like, oh my gosh, I see this guy sign everywhere. Maybe they'll call. Um, I try to do funny signs, you know, like if I'll buy your house and give you a pizza or something, you know, I seen one that said, my mama's boyfriend buys houses, stuff like that. So I think just the traditional, you know, big letters for the phone number and we buy houses fast, ca cash fast or something like that, or we buy houses, any condition, um, any, you know, any, what is it? Any, yeah, we buy houses, any situation, any condition, any situation. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, the more you get out there, the more chance you got someone to call, right? Yeah. For sure. Thanks, Eddie. Appreciate that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Eddie, it's Mark. You, I'll, I'll buy 200 signs. You go with me. We'll put them out. I'll prove that they work. You gotta <laughs> okay. Make, you got to run all the calls. Okay. Deal. All right. So just, I'm serious. Oh, I it absolutely <laughs> work. And, and Deal. Todd's right about putting them on abandoned cut on houses like that because really what he's doing, he's just leaving an oversized business card for him to, to call, you know, so it's, it's perfect. Okay. Um, do you guys want to hear my radio commercial? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, let's hear it. For wholesaling? All right, let me grab it real fast. I, it took me nine, maybe 10 months to get on this radio. I mean, it was hard. And the reason why is because they wanted a lot, a lot of money. And I was like, no. Also, Todd, Patricia has her hand up. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate that. Hi, Patricia. Hi, Todd. I have a quick question about being a real, because you're a realtor, right? Yes. Okay. So do you feel like, I mean, how do you identify yourself do you identify yourself as a realtor when you're meeting with these homeowners or how do you handle that part of it yeah that's a great great question so i'm going to tell you the right way remember whatever i tell you is a lie <laughs> try it for yourself <laughs> um <laughs> all right i'm gonna be careful what i say yeah it won't hurt hi you know i'm a licensed realtor I'm also an, I'm an investor Okay. and I buy houses cash. Okay. Got it. All yeah. right. That's, that's buy nice houses answer. cash. <laughs> and when I do a purchase agreement, it says that I'm a licensed real estate agent. I'm a licensed okay. salesperson in the state of Michigan is how okay. I, how I say it. A great question. Perfect. Thank you. Yep. 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 All right. Let's see. Oh, I know why it's not popping up here. I got to go to my other email. So this was under Michigan Home Solutions is the, um, the company that I, that I did it from. All right, let's see. All right. Someone 
All right, here we go. Tell me if you can't hear it. It's going to start now. Might have to turn it up. Can you hear it? No. Can't hear anything. I know how you do it. Here it is. It'll be on my phone and you can hear it. From my computer, it doesn't work. So, I mean, it works. I can hear it, but you can't. That's so weird. All right. So, Here it is. Sir. All right. Any any other questions? I'll find this in a minute. I'm sorry. Am I on mute? <laughs> No, they can hear you. Oh, they can hear me? Okay. So while, while you're looking that up, guys, uh, at the very beginning of the chat, I put in a YouTube channel that uh, Todd's done a ton of videos uh, breaking down step-by-step -step on a lot of the stuff he's talking about. And we've had a lot of speakers in. So that's something you want to check out. Uh, and I also listed some Facebook groups. Are you, are you set, Todd, to go? Here it goes. All right. Sorry it took me so long, guys. And Gales. Hi, this is Todd with Michigan Home Solutions, and I buy houses cash. If you own a house and want to sell it fast at a fair price, call me at 844-MHS-BUYS, 844-MHS-BUYS. I can pay cash and close in as little as three days. I buy houses in any condition, any price range, and any location. I am a private real estate investor who buys several houses a month, and I want to buy more. I buy inherited houses, divorce houses, behind on payment houses. I even buy my tenant won't pay me the rent houses. Do you own a house that is trashed and needs thousands of dollars in repairs? Great, because I love buying junk houses. I buy vacant houses, vacant land, abandoned houses, condemned houses, and foreclosure houses. If you own a house and want to sell it fast, call me at 844-MHS-BUYS, 844-MHS-BUYS, 844-647-2897. Yeah, so I just started that um, Tuesday. I don't know what day it is. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So it's going to take a minute before, you know, people hear it enough. It plays five times a day on a country station and i'm working on a am station next to see how it works so. cool what do you think good bad it sounds like exactly. you <laughs> yeah. i don't know if that's good or bad but yeah <laughs> you had you had your own you know you you can tell todd that uh you're comfortable in your own skin you know just your sense of humor that you've had across this training, you all came across in the commercial as well. So the more authentic you are, and when you talk to anybody, I think, um, you know, yeah. you'll do better. So I think you did a good job. Thank you, thank you. Appreciate that. I, I did get a, um, two calls already, one appointment. So I'm just, I'm trying to do something different. That's it, right? Awesome, awesome. So um, I want to get more questions. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've done radio before and it took like a month be, of doing it. And then all of a sudden it started to flow in. So you're correct about the repetition. So if you're getting a few calls now, that's that's a good sign. Right. I appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah, I've been doing it for 12 months and trying to get on another station after, you know, in the next couple of months. And then um, I know, hey, Mark, what is the next one about part two? Do you remember? Uh, no, but I can look. <laughs> yeah. So on the first Thursday, I think we're in what, April, May 5th, I believe it is. It, we're going to be doing this again. It'll be on something else. I will send you guys, everyone that's here, I'll put it into like a Dropbox of everything and I'll send you the links. 
Okay. Um, you know, we'll get that taken care of. Well, I'm going to send a purchase agreement, assignment agreement, um, the lead sheet. The, the next the next series is on uh, how to talk to the sellers, negotiating, getting the contract, uh, step by step, what to say, the scripts for your cold calls, like a script on what to say. And you've got some really good ones. I actually use what you you've I learned from you. Uh, what to say, what to ask, how to handle the customer when you walk through a house, uh, having the right purchase agreement. So that's what next month's about. Okay, great. And maybe I could um, set up some appointments um, like the day, the morning of or the day before to call some of the customers back at the time of the, you know, and we could do some live calls. That'd be pretty good. Um, but I do have a tip also. I, I should have said this. So if you have anyone in your area, like Melvin, there's a guy named Michael Heater. I don't know if you know him. Really nice guy. He's in Saginaw area. And if you know people that are in the area, you should try to meet up with them, you know, either every day or once a week on the weekends and make phone calls together, you know. And the, I used to do this where I'd invite 10, 20 people to my office and we'll all sit there and make phone calls. And, and or I'll teach them how to make phone calls. But just by listening to other people, you might catch something that they say that they sh that you want to say, you know, sounded really good. OK. And or they might have a lead and you might know that area and say, I got a buyer for it. And you squat up and you, and you sell the deal. Sorry. <laughs> and you sell. Sorry about that. And, and you sell a deal together. So it's really good when you're with other people in the same room and working okay so that's just a a tip that you might want to do um if you want to make phone calls and you could help each other out and things like that uh laura has her hand up she's had it up for a while <laughs> sorry I, I can't figure this thing out it says there's a hand but i don't know who it is okay hey laura sorry Oh, I... there we go. Um, I had a question of title that find the title company. I've worked in title companies for 30, more than 30 years, and I have never seen an assignment contract. So mm -hmm. how would I go about bringing that up? How do I go about like even to ask my boss if they even do that? How do you know if they're investor friendly? So you work at a title company now? Or no? Hey, and I can't hear you. Oh, you can't? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Yep, I can hear you. Oh, okay. Do you work at a title company now? You. Okay. I, Just tell I, them. I was tell, 18. Yeah, tell them one of your, if you've never seen it, they don't do it. But just say okay. one of your friends, Todd, um, was okay. asking uh, me if you I do. Four, four different title companies that I've never seen that in a contract, never seen an assignment at all. But mm -hmm. I, you know, not usually the closing end, but I do see the contracts all day long. Yeah. Yeah. Ask them if they work with wholesalers and okay. assignments and see what they say. Okay. Because maybe our underwriter, because we also, you know, work with First American underwriting. Maybe they do because they're probably national. Mm -hmm. I've used them before. Yeah. Um, American instead. Yeah. And you could maybe find some. Um, or just ask other wholesalers that have been doing it what title company okay, that other they use. Of a, a real estate agents that are investors too, so maybe ask them who they use. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, deal with us, but they might also use other title companies for those types of deals. Right. Okay. All right. I will ask them. Thank you. You're welcome. Good question. Good question. And then um, lastly, um, um, well, let's just see if there's any anything else there. I'm just trying. Mark, um, anything you got for me, Mark, or any other questions you could think of that I should go over? I, I would just say that it, the people that are on the call, ask them what the number one thing is that's stopping them, and then maybe we can help them figure out how they could yeah. team up with somebody to, to, to get it handled. Um, 
And, yeah. Um, Good one. Thanks, Mark. So. Hey. Oh, sorry about that. This is JR. Yeah. Um, I've been on um, listening to call for the whole time, or most of the time, at least. I've been on since like 6.15. Um, I feel like what's stopping me, honestly, is I'm YouTube University educated. So that means I got a lot of my like, you know, know how about wholesaling through YouTube. I didn't really have a mentor or anything like that. Um, but through the grace of God and like, you know, I knew a little bit, like I said, YouTube University, I was able to go into a mom and pop shop a little bit background about me. I was able to go to a little mom and pop like real estate office. They wasn't like a Century 21 or Remax or anything like that, but they let me in because um I showed them like I kind of knew what I was talking about and I got discouraged when I would send them deals, right? Or things I thought that would be good wholesale opportunities or fix and flips and things like that. Mm -hmm. I would show them the deals and I guess they didn't pay attention to me because I was the youngest at the office at the time. I guess they thought I didn't know what I was talking about or whatever. Um, they, they didn't pay attention to any of the deals I sent them. So I you know I kept my head down still and my ears up. I would find out that the properties that I sent them, it was getting worked on. Like someone else got the property before I like I sent it to them. I'm like, hey guys, look at property, blah, blah, blah. They wouldn't do nothing with it. And then I go by that property a few weeks later, I see people like um, rehabbing it. They're doing the, um, the roofing and stuff like that. I even brought it back to their attention. Like, hey guys, remember that, that property I told you guys about is getting worked on now that that could have been our money, you know? Right. Oh, so I, I I bring them more deals, and they and they did the same thing, and they just they they ignored it, and I felt kind of I was real discouraged at that point. I'm like, well, I I don't really necessarily know how to get things under contract myself. I know the steps, but I need someone to like show me. So I don't know if there's like a mentorship program, or even if I sent you guys anyone in here deals or anything like that, if you guys would pay attention to them. But I, I just, I just, it's just a hurt feeling when you say, hey, that looks like it could be something. And right. you try to talk to people about it and they, they ignore you. And then you end up seeing like that same property is getting worked on a few months later. It kind of hurts. Yeah, 100%. You know, they might have been stealing your deal. Kind of sounds like it could have been a little bit. That could be a possibility. What state are you in? What city? I'm in New Jersey. Um, I operate out of Hillside, Irvington, Newark, so, um, East Orange, things like that, but New Jersey. Okay. So, so hey, Todd, can I put my two cents in? Yeah, of so, course. Uh, the, when, <clears throat> when you're an investor and you want to go to work for a real estate company and you show up at a major brand retail uh, real estate company or the, the mom and pop shops, you want to make sure where you're going to find the real estate company you want to work for is you're going to look and find out who's a broker that's going to the RIA meetings, who's a broker that has agents that are going there. So like if you were in your, our market, you'd say to Todd, what broker are you with? Because I guarantee you Todd's with a broker that you could bring stuff like that. And you'd probably get jumped walking in the office with people wanting those deals. So those brokerages exist in your market, but you got to go to the RIAs and you got to go to the meetings to find out where they are. And that's where you want to go hang out. Yep, yep. Okay, okay. So, thank you. So find a good broker and uh, the RIA meetups. You want to find an investor-oriented broker, one that, okay. one that has REO agents, real uh, agents that are handling foreclosed properties, agents that are doing BPOs. It's a broker's price opinion. And then along the way, you're probably going to want to end up getting a real estate license too, because as an investor, you can make, and Todd's already alluded to it, talking about how he makes money with the real estate license and with the wholesale deals. Todd, yeah. I'll shut up. I'm, I'm jumping. Oh, that's right. And JR, feel free, reach out to me if you got a deal or any deals you're working on. All right. We can work them together. All right. I'll, I'll show you how to do it. And, um, you know, you're, I think you're almost there. You know, if you're finding a deal, that's the hardest part. Now, you know, so we could, you know, I can help you with that. Awesome. All right. So who that, th thanks. That, that helps out. 
who else um who else wants to talk next about um you know what's stopping them or you know what 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 maybe we give you some good advice well i guess uh todd for me um i just left corporate world two weeks ago you know um my thing was to cold feet you know i'm not wanting to jump you know i'm a, I'm a you know husband and a father and the stability and the security that i was able to provide for my family um as a provider first and foremost was my priority uh but being in the corporate world in today's uh, uh you know culture or whatnot uh the stress alone you know began to weigh on me it wasn't what i wanted to do anymore so and i always had an interest in real estate and wholesaling so two weeks ago i just said I'm jumping, right? So now uh, I was at the process of where I've read a few books, you know, and uh, just like the lady who spoke earlier, uh, you know, making those calls, you know, I, I do the drive for dollars twice a day. So it's just having uh, that resource, you know, you could call someone or like, yo, this is what I seen today. This is what I did. This is where I messed up. And just to have someone to, you know, kind of walk you through it. That's that's where it is for me. Because once, once it's go time, it's go time. You know, right. two feet on the ground, I'm running, right? So I didn't want to be running in the wrong direction. So, you know, I've, I've read the books. I've, I've, I've tried to, you know, acquire some knowledge base to begin to start. So that was the purpose of me jumping on this call. You know, it's, you know, it's starting and having someone like you, you gave me your number or whatnot, to be able to just bounce things off. Hey, this is what I think I did. This is what I shouldn't have did. Or just that guidance. That was what's holding me up is the guidance. Good. So well, congratulations on that. I know it's not easy. I did it. I was I'm married with two. I was two sons, and and yeah, it's not definitely not easy. But how you gotta just figure out how many, how much do I gotta make, you know, to, you know, make so I was making the same amount of money as I was before, and then how can I double that? How can I triple that? The amount of money you can make doing this is insane it's 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 insane whatever number you think you're not thinking big enough really all right but now we just got to get our first deal or consistently get a deal every month and then how can i get a deal every week how can i get more and double that you know so that's just i mean it everyone's situation is different someone just might just want one deal a month they're happy some people want five deals a month and they'll be happy so um, that's the, at eight o'clock today, if you, anyone that wants to stay on, um, um, it's, um, a group that I belong to. Okay. And we, every morning we Monday through Friday, we have a little wholesaling kind of like, what do you call that when, if you're into AA or something like that, where you have your group session pretty much on zoom and we and we help each other okay what is that called mark a 12-step program for real estate yeah that, exactly <laughs> that's what, that's what that is and so it's about um the first part is about how in in our business um it, we it's about essential services creating residual income around with your deals with essential services okay and then helping your people that are buying the houses you know property managers or um people you sell rentals to or flippers and things like that so we're going to do that at eight o'clock and then also then we do um i'm working with some of the i just started doing this um recently and now as of now i want to do it monday through friday at um, like 10 30 11 a.m we'll pick the exact time eastern time and um because i got some good ideas where i could like help you melvin where we could help each other and make some money you know in that you know and learn at the same time you know hopefully i work out a deal where we're both making a lot of money and we're partners kind of jv and a lot of deals but eventually you might go by yourself and I'm still be happy for you. And we'll still talk and bounce things off each other. So that that's something. So that's going to start probably right around eight o'clock. I'm trying to get it started right now, but. Yeah. The, the, the great deal about teaming up in the real estate wholesale thing 
you know, like you, you got, you all get married or you get a partner and then comes the divorce. Well, this is a planned divorce. It's really simple. You're going to get the property and then get it sold and split the money. So it's, it's a, it's a great, great system and it works. Right. So I'm, if I'm, and I don't even think I told you, Mark, is I'm really, I'm really trying to expand in different markets. Okay. On April 21st, I'm going to Dallas, Texas, and I'm going to be doing a meetup. I'm trying to bring people that are in Dallas to buy rental properties in Detroit because the ROI is out of, out of this world. And if they do it right, they will succeed. You know, it's because I'm, I, I know everybody in Detroit area. So I could give them three good property managers that they could vet. I could give them some contractors that I know are good that they could vet. And I could show them these are the houses and neighborhoods you want to be in. And this is how much rent you should be getting. And, and I could sell them the houses. And if they are successful, they're going to buy a lot of houses from me. So that's going to be April 21st. I got everything set up. I just got my flyer together. I'm going to be sending it to Mark and we're going to try to get 100 or 200 people there. Then I might be going to, where you at? Saginaw, <laughs> Melvin. Or I might be going to New Jersey and I'm already talking to a guy who wants me to go to New York and do the same thing. So this way, and while I'm there in Dallas, I'm going to knock on some doors and I'm going to see what the neighborhoods are like. And I'm going to try to get some deals on the contract there. I'm gonna, I got people there in Dallas that I want to work with. Okay, so I'm gonna go to Saginaw, Melvin. Maybe we go knock on some doors together. All right. And and I just started doing this part of it, trying to get I, I try to go away every month now. I'm if Mark knows me for the last six years, five years, I never went away ever. I work Monday through Sunday all day long. Now my business is running better when I go away for two days because I'm still doing deals. I got a couple people in place, you know, so, and I could show you everything. I've all the mistakes I've made and all the stuff that um, all the stuff that I'm doing now. And it depends on, do you want a wholesale business where you have 25 employees or do you want one with three employees, one employee? I know a guy that's really successful makes really good money and it's him um a va he has for five years and um one other person okay i want probably five or six people and that's it and you know so i don't want the big 20 20 people so who's next come on Because I want to, because at eight o'clock or maybe slightly before, we're going to have that other quick meeting. I got a, a guest coming on here and it won't take long at all. That'll be probably about 15 minutes. But the one important thing is the, the, the wholesaling, um, the wholesaling, I guess, 12 step program that Mark called it is something, it's really beneficial, you know, for everybody. Yeah, it, it helps us both if you, if on the upcoming seminars, if you'll tell us like stuff you want, then we can help put it together for you. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, when I send out the purchase agreements, assignments, if anyone has any questions next month, we'll, I'll go over those too, you know. Yeah. And maybe I could do a video. I'm trying to do more live videos of going through houses. And um, some some sellers might even let me tape them while I'm while I'm going I need to get one of those pro cams or something yeah Todd's been doing a ton of uh we are I should say we've been doing a ton of short videos so like if you got a couple of minutes if you go to the YouTube channel it's like they're real specific uh like on how to track your results if you're if you're advertising like you want to have tracking numbers on your bandit signs you need to know where you're what's working for you best like Todd's on the radio he's got bandit signs He's doing mailings. He's got all kinds of ways, but he's got separate tracking numbers on that. 
so you can see what's the most effective way to do it. So we got like little tips like that. Like if you're going to go into a property and tie it up, he just did a video it was outstanding. On it. The, the video is like three minutes, but he walks you through exactly what you want to do when you're going into a house that you're going to wholesale, how to take the pictures, where to take them, street shots, how to walk through the house and shoot the pictures, and then how to package that whole deal so that you're not going to upset some buyer and you're going to give the buyer everything about the house, good, bad, ugly, and put your deals together. So there's a ton of tips on that YouTube channel. So, yeah, yeah that's, a, yeah, like when you're selling a deal, just like Mark said, if I get deals from, you know, also try to get on other wholesalers list because you want to see what they're doing, right? What's that saying, Mark, copy and steal? You want to, you want to, um, <laughs> now I'm hey, copy and you steal everything. Kate, you want to case something. That means copy and steal everything. <laughs> the word case. Yeah, it's, it's actually, mod everything. it's called modeling success, but technically it's copy and steal everything. <laughs> right, exactly. So, you know, they might have a flyer that you, you know, I'll, I could show you guys my flyer that I send out or my Google sheet that I use to pitch out my deals. I should put this in there, in the my link in there. All right, and um, it's a live link. And I got this from another wholesaler. I told him, thank you. He don't care. Um, you know, so that's why you get on these buy, buyers list. And um, all right, where's the chat? There it is. Hang on. If you're on the meetups, you can also just email me. I'm if Whatever meetup you're on, Dallas, New York, wherever, they're all coming to me. So uh, I'll, I'll make sure they get answered and back to you all right so um, i think i just sent it in the yeah there's my link right there but anyways yeah so you copy everything and and anyways you get to see what they're doing you might know the area and say oh my gosh there's no way they're gonna sell that house for that then you should keep track of that you should keep track of it and maybe 30 days later call that guy and ask if they ever sold it okay and Try to get the buyer out of them. If you're a realtor, look and see who bought it. You know, keep keep track of that stuff. If 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 they paid a lot of money, they're probably buying a, a good buyer. So you got to keep track and organized of your buyers list. We'll go over that also. That's really really important. You know, I got a a great buyers list, and it, and I'm just trying to get better and better with it. And I got people coming. Um, that's going to be working with me and you know that's in, my son works with me so we're I, mean, I got them building that buyer's list you know so and I'll show you guys how to build a buyer's list too and um, all right so anyone else what's that what else is holding someone back oh wait we got Laureen is that Noah yes yeah, hello Todd my uh, name is Ty. This is um, I'm, I'm new um, into wholesaling, and uh, I've, I've done one deal, um, and I've been looking at uh, YouTube videos for probably a year or so. I'm in the um, I'm I'm in a suburb of Chicago, and from what I understand, in Illinois. Uh, after you do one wholesale deal, you uh, have to have license. And so I'm very, I'm, I'm very, very new at this. And so my question is, do you work, um, JV, with uh, people in the Illinois, um, the uh, Chicago area? Um, and this is my first time uh, ever being on, you know, a video. Um, Whatever you call it, right? A Zoom, yeah, for a sure. Zoom, yeah, you know yeah. about yeah, about real estate. So yeah, just you know, it's so much information. I stumbled on one uh, before. I I live in a condo, and there had been a vacant property for for like five years, and I asked the next door neighbor if um, they knew who who owned the property. 
and the lady ended up selling me the property for $37,000. And I just got it appraised last week for like a hundred and ten. So I just, I mean, I just stumbled, you know, and I'm, you know, and I'm living here. And so I stumbled on it. I really don't know what I did. I just, you know, kind of stumbled on it. And uh, yeah, so uh, should I get real estate license? Um, you know, just, I mean, I'm, I really need a mentor, really, you know, or someone to work to until I can fly, you know, on my own wings, with my own wings. Yeah, absolutely. So the in the Chicago market, from my understanding, it sounds like you said you could get you go do one wholesale and after that you got to you gotta buy can you buy it and then sell it in Chicago? Do you know? Yeah, I'm sure you can. Okay. It's just I think you cannot wholesale. Right. Got it. Yep. So that might be, yeah, I would partner up with you I could even if I know it's a good deal um I'll buy it and then we could sell it you know so we have to look at that that's another once you start wholesaling long enough then you start thinking and Chicago is making you do this even in the beginning but then you say okay now do I wholesale this and make five or ten thousand or do I buy it, clean it out, put it on the MLS and make 30,000 fast though, not flipping it and putting it all together, spending three, four, five, six months on it. No, clean it, buy it less than a week. It's listed on the market and for a lot more money. Okay. So those are the things that's wholetailing. I want to do way more of that this year than ever you know not every deal um but yeah lauren did you i'll put your make sure you have your information in the chat okay i do have a facebook page and you guys could direct message me it's um tc deals detroit all right detroit please like that or or join it in um facebook okay. yeah but okay so this is my last question if I found if I found something and I passed it to you, you know, I showed it to you. And if you I can't hear I, I'm sorry, Lorraine. I, it's hard to hear you. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah, way better. Okay. So let me make sure that I uh, understand. Okay, so if I found something that you felt had enough money in it, you would be the you would be the buyer because I don't have the money. Correct. And then, okay, so how, how, how exactly would that work? Um, well, you and I got to, it all, it's going to probably be a deal by deal, but, you know, we have to talk about that, Lorraine. All right. But I, of course, I'm, I'm in the business of making it, making it happy. Like if you borrow the money from someone else to buy it, you're going to have to pay for that, of course. And it's not a lot, but we could we could work a deal like that together. So we, we just have to talk about it. So if you and and um, so we need to connect so we could work that out and see how we could work together. Okay, okay. that sounds good. Thank you so much, Scott. Yeah, for sure, hundred percent. And if anyone has, and I'm now it sounds like I'm trying to recruit you all, but I'm not. <laughs> but that's what it sounds like. I can hear it. But if you do have any deals that you need help on that you want to work together and we will have a Zoom or we'll get on the phone and try to figure out what the plan of attack is and how we could get the thing locked up and get it sold. And sometimes we buy them. Sometimes we just wholesale them. Um, yeah, reach out for sure. Um, and then another thing is I, I, um, when Lorene was talking, I thought of this. So here's another, here's another um, one quick thing. So when you're talking to a seller and let's say the house is really bad, okay? And I know people listen to podcasts and they say, you know, you should tell the seller you're wholesaling the deal, right? So if I tell the seller that I'm not the buyer, 
there's a way to do it. If I tell the seller I'm not the buyer, I got buyers and they're going to come in and they're going to, you know, blah, 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 blah. They might say, why the hell? The, why, why am I? Why are you here? Right. So what I tell them, I look at it. I do it a couple of different ways. If it's a house that I, I know I'm not going to buy it because sometimes I would buy it if I can't sell it, if, if I know it's, I could sell it eventually. But anyways, I tell the seller, I say, you know what, for me, you know, I buy a lot of houses. I'm working on a lot of houses. And um, for me to buy this property, let's say they want 20 grand for me to buy this property. I got I'm, I'm going to be at like $10,000. If that works for you, uh, then let's do it. They're going to, you know, I know I gave them a number so low, I know it won't work. And if it works, I'm going to sign it. Okay. And they, they say, no, I you know, I said, well, oh, you know what? Now that I'm thinking, I get so many people that call me every day. I got a huge network of people. All they do is call me. Do you have a deal? Because they know I'm working on a lot of deals and I can't buy them all. And, and they pay more than I do. And, you know, matter of fact, one of them, a lot of them are out of state. There's some local people, but I'm, they just called me the other day, a guy from Florida, and he has people here. And, and they buy a lot of deals. I'm like their guy. I, you know, I might partner up with them and be their boots on the ground and things like that. But they pay more than I do. I can't, I know they won't pay 20, but if you could do like 17, 18, somewhere in that, would that work for you? Boom. Awesome. Great. So what I'm going to do, now I, I write it up. 18,000, pay all the clothes, boom, I get them to sign it. And then I tell but they know I'm not the buyer. So I'm going to say, look, I know one of them, the guy in Florida, he's actually going to be flying down here next week. And I got a couple other people. So I'm going to, you know, I work on getting a key or getting a lockbox on that house, or I'll go pick up the key and then bring it back to him. I do not want the seller to meet me at the house. If I, if it's a vacant house, all right, or tenanted or whatever, I try not to, I don't want the seller around. But if they are around, there's a way of doing that. That's no big deal. But now they know I'm not the buyer and I got to bring people back through the house. Has anyone wholesaled enough or have that problem of getting, getting people in and out of the house? Okay. If you haven't, you will. But I just told you something that's going to help you with that. Okay. Because if you, why do you keep getting people coming to the house? I thought you were the buyer. You know, you can only, I always tell them I got to bring my property manager, my property, um, what do I call them? Um, maintenance, my property manager and, uh, I'll think of it, it's just lost my mind. But I always say I got to bring my property manager through and um, we want to look at what we got to do to the house and things like that. 